Hello and welcome. I am Jay Beach alongside Christopher Zunk, that plus country music's greatest mullet, a Stanford grad whose luck ran out in his prime, and two positional races that might actually be closer than between Peyton Manning and Johnny Yu. All that and more as the Lunchroom Syndicate presents their completely factual, not at all subjective list of the Indianapolis Colts all-time team. One of the other things we like to do here is we tier off the players into three tiers, a bottom tier, a middle tier, and a top tier. The bottom tier will be will be colored in as white tier. These are players that are pretty good, belong on this list, but realistically aren't really all-time team material. We're going to make the middle tier the blue tier tonight, uh, and that tier is going to be guys that are in consideration, but definitely a notch below the top, but are really, really great players. And the gold tier in this case for the Colts is going to be our top tier. These are no-brainers for all-time teams. Um, it's They're the best of the best. Okay, so we have our positions under. We have our tier system explained. Next thing we do before we kick into it is we decide upon our face of the franchise. And Zunk, who are you going with for the Indianapolis Colts? Peyton Manning. Oh, good. So we're just starting off and you're like, hey, fuck you, Jay. I'm taking the win. You get the loss. And then I'm going to put it up and say, hey, I have superior argumentative skills. Like I can debate with the best mm -hmm. of them because I'm taking Peyton Manning. You shithead. What do you got on Peyton? I mean, it's probably closer than I, I give it credit for from time to time. But Peyton Manning, I, I understand what Tom Brady has done in the NFL, but to me, he's the greatest quarterback that's ever lived. And when you think Indianapolis Colts, Indianapolis Colts, you definitely think Peyton Manning, um, Baltimore Colts, maybe Giant United's more. But we this is taking both teams into account. Just want to get that, make that clear. Peyton Manning was the Indianapolis Colts for many years, was the offense of Indianapolis, ran the offense basically through him. Offense coordinators, for all intents and purposes, didn't exist in Indianapolis. Also, he's a funny dude. He's one of the most intelligent QBs ever play, one of the best that's ever played. Uh, when he retired overall, he had every basically every record up until Breeze and Brady beat him a few years later. But uh, I always said when he was with the Colts that if the MVP went to the true most valuable player, it would be him every year. Giant Unice is more known. If you're going through Baltimore, if you're if you're breaking them up and say he's Giant Unice, it's Baltimore Colt, obviously, but nonetheless. Yeah, so of course he's known as a Baltimore Colt because Indianapolis Colts did not exist. Baltimore Colts did, however, under his guidance, win four title games. That's three pre-merger and one Super Bowl. His first record is generally considered the greatest game ever played. 1958 against the Giants. That was overtime game. Greatest game ever played, beating the Giants 23-17. Uh, Johnny Unitas just tearing it up with the records there. Uh, and he's got a middle name of Constantine, and uh, that, that's got to give you some bonus points there too. Johnny Unitas for the win. To get to your point of the generation thing where – Obviously, that was going to be my point is if we had a room with 10 people in their 70s and a room with 10 people that are in their 30s, we're going to have a 10 to 10 split on Unitas and Peyton Manning. Each one of them can go through their arguments, and I don't think they're going to sway a single person over from one generation over to uh, switching the other side um, which puts us in the predicament of, well, we both belong in the one group. We both belong in the Peyton Manning group. Peyton Manning is the obvious choice. Yeah. yeah. So we're over the quarterback. We have four of them that we're going to be discussing. Burt Jones, Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning, Johnny Unitas. 
Uh, Peyton Manning, we already talked about. He's our face of the franchise. He is gold tier without question. Um, and, and now we do, and we have made cases before, where our face of the franchise isn't guaranteed that top spot. Is that the case here in Indy? No, for me, no. No, no it's not. Peyton Manning's going up. Running backs, who are we looking at? At running backs, we have Joseph Adai. Eric Dickerson, Marshall Falk, Edger and James, Lydell Mitchell, Lenny Moore, and Jonathan Taylor. My timing might be slightly off here, but one of the reasons why the Colts felt the need to not continue on with Marshall Falk is they drafted our next back, Edger and James. Edger and James with the Colts was a bit overshadowed because of the team, because of the team around him, Peyton Manning, and the wide receivers we'll get to later. But he was damn good in Indy. He's a gold tier. Yeah. Um, he's probably going to be my first pick on here. He came around more after his career was over. I, when, when he first retired, I'm like, there's no way he's a Hall of Famer. Like, I, I actually didn't think of him as a Hall of Famer. But looking at his stats and, and overall, including with the, other, with the Cardinals, I think he played one more year with someone else. Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. Next up, another Hall of Famer because the Colts – have a monopoly on Hall of Fame running backs, it seems. Lenny Moore, he was he was one of the first passing-dependent running backs. He wasn't huge in the running game. More receiving yards than touchdown than run, rushing yards. But 111 touchdowns overall, he is an obvious goal tier for me. Yeah, um, and it, it's really when I'm like, I'm – probably taking edge Lenny Moore, man, he, the, with the receiving yards and those touchdown totals might give, give the edge. I mean, it's not an easy take an edge over him, no. um, but James got it done on the ground substantially better. Yeah. So of our three, yes, these guys are definitely on the team, which two are definitely going on the team. Oh man. I, I'm with you. I'm with you when you said, I think it's Lenny Moore and Edger and James. Uh, whether or not it's in that order is, is, is the only difficult part. I, and that's tough for me to say about Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk's one of my favorite running backs of all time, let alone one of the best. Uh, but when you talk about the Colts, you can talk about on the Colts specifically, which is what this exercise that we do is. Edger and James and Lenny Moore were both better backs. Uh, so our running backs ultimately are Edger and James and Lenny Moore. And our wide receiving core, we are going to be looking at Raymond Berry, Bill Brooks, Glenn Dowdy, Marvin Harrison, T.Y. Hilton, Jimmy Orr, and Reggie Wayne. Marvin Harrison, uh, damn, just great, 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 great wide receiver here. He's an easy gold tier. Raymond Berry, Raymond Berry, one of the best route runners in NFL history, one of the first that really was crisp at it, made the chemistry with Johnny Unitas, one of the first two duos to really take that into consideration. He is a very, very easy gold tier for me. Yeah, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I remember it is Johnny U and Raymond Berry are like the first two quarterback and wide receiver to actually go out and practice their routes and their timing and working on that chemistry. And, you know, mm -hmm. that falls in the air before the cuts made because each one knows what the other is going to be doing. And finally, another absolute legend at the position, Reggie Wayne, gold tier all day. Uh, him, him and Marvin Harrison on the team, same team just seems unfair, and they were for a number of years. It, it is, and you look at it, and you're like, man, poor Reggie Wayne. Like, that's a lot of yards and receptions, and his touchdown total, while impressive, is way behind Marvin Harrison, but that's because Marvin Harrison was taking them all from him. So we have three selections. We have three gold tiers, so that job's easy for us. My order would be Harrison Wayne Barry. I might be. I would. I would. Barry Wayne. I, I lean towards Harrison Bear, Barry Wayne. In our tight end position, we, we're looking at Indianapolis Clark, Ken Dilger, John McKee, Jim Nutsmeller, and Marcus Pollard. 
John Mackey, I think we're going to have some disagreement here. I think you're going to undersell him a bit more than than he's absolutely deserves. He's a gold tier to me. You when, think he's a gold when, tier? Whenever you talk greatest Titans of all time with, with people who are knowledgeable with the game, who are historians, John Mackey's in the in the conversation for top ten. He revolutionized position. He was one of the first truly great receiving tight ends ever. Period. He's in the Hall of Fame for a reason. He is a name that I know very well. He's always someone that comes up in that, like I said, in that conversation for greatest tight ends of all time. When I was making this list, I was like, oh, this is an easy goal tier. See, I, I have him right on par. Like I for our one pick, I'm back and forth between him and Dallas Clark. Yeah, and it's a, there's it wasn't, a it wasn't an easy pick for me. I probably was leaning towards John, but not by a substantial amount. Which then takes us to our altos. And who are we who are we looking at here? We have Ray Donaldson, Tarek Glenn, Jim Parker, Jeff Saturday, Adam Venetieri, Johnny Unitas, Marshall Falk, Eric Dickerson, and T.Y. Hilton. And we also have Johnny Unitas, Hall of Famer, obviously another gold tier without question. Uh, Johnny Unitas is the first spot on here. Oh, yeah, with these. Not, there's not a question about that. Uh, Jim Parker, one of those guys that there was just that massive gap that I was talking about. He's gold tier. Yeah. Um, outside his face looks extraordinarily fat in that helmet. <laughs> uh, yeah, eight-time first-team All-Pro. Yeah, he's a gold tier. Yeah. And, and speaking of gold tier, Jeff Saturday, one of the best centers ever to play the game. Uh sh- will be Hall of Famer one day. Somehow not yet, uh, but that's kind of the bias against linemen at times with the Hall of Fame, but should be in. Okay. Um, Marshall Falk is the next name on here. He is another guy who bounced around a bit. And who else did he play for? The Rams. Jesus Christ. Fucking Indy. He started with Colts and went to the Rams, unlike Eric Dickerson, who went the opposite route. Started with Rams. Went the opposite route. Maybe they were traded. Maybe they <laughs> traded Dickerson for Falk. We'll have to look that up at some point. Right now, I'm just claiming it. They were traded. It yeah, was they weren't, but yeah, sure. Let's, let's say that. Straight up head one for one trade. Eric Dickerson for Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk uh, leaving Indy to go off to have a better career. Both of them had a, I think, had a better career with the Rams and what they did with the Colts. Um, but Marshall Falk still had a hell of a career with the Indianapolis Colts. He is a gold tier. Well, a I top, make a top five back of all time, man. Yeah, I, when I make top five list, he's always on that list. So on our O is John Unitas, Jim Parker, Jeff Saturday, and Marshall Falk. Offense. It's time for the D. Time for the D. Give me the DJ. Give me the D. I'm going to give everyone out there the D. Jay, who do we have here at defensive line? Or Dell. I don't know if you pronounce the E at the end. Or Dell Brassy, Fred Cook, Art Donovan, Dwight Freeney, Gino Marchietti, Robert Mathis, and Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> That's... <laughs> is the most Billy Ray Cyrus pitcher of all the Billy Ray Cyrus pitchers, and there are some doozies out there. Gino March Marchetti, another Hall of Famer, another guy whose stats aren't maybe updated properly just because of the era he played. And he played; he was a '40s '50s guy. He is a gold tier though. Seven first team All Pros, eleven time Pro Bowler. The dude was a beast. We have. Dwight Freeney, just a freaking man beast. One of the best, one of the best, one of the best out there. One of the best speed rushers to ever play the game. Next up, we have the linebacker position, which is becoming kind of the right D of our of our NFL all time list so far. Just not as good as I thought it would be. Now, Grant, we haven't got to some big time teams with linebackers, admittedly. But for the Indianapolis Colts, we have Dwayne Bickett, Mike Curtis, Ted Hendricks. Look how tall that motherfucker is. Darius Leonard, Bill Pellington, Don Shinnick, and Stan White. Darius Leonard, uh, 
current linebacker for the Colts, and I think he's already a gold tier, quite frankly. Just an absolute game changer as a linebacker for the Colts today. Uh, and his stats already prove that in terms of recognition. Yeah, he's he's easily the most skilled on on the list that we have here. And then we have Ted, too tall for too tall Hendricks. Ted Hendricks, Hall of Famer, the only one on here, and he's going to be a gold tier for it. Gold tier, only played 70 games in his Colts career. I think he had some time elsewhere. But in his career, I just want to point out this man, and judging by his picture, you can see why, blocked 25 field goals and point after touchdown attempts. How many? 25. And 24 of them were with his face. Next up, Mike Curtis. I think Mike Curtis is a pretty solid blue tier, and, and there's maybe a case be made even on gold. Two-time first-team all-pro for 60 and a half sacks, 21 picks from the linebacker spot in the olden era. Good damn, damn good linebacker for his age. I was probably leaning towards gold, so he's definitely on that borderline. Mm-hmm. We have to decide between one and two yet. Do we go with the Hall of Fame or do we go with the year talent? You know, initially I was like, oh, you know, it'd be it, – it, I, uh, I mean, I'm going to be quick on the draw, so as soon as you say that, make sure you're looking. Uh, See if we're on the same page. I initially would have said Ted Hendricks was going to be number one. I was going to be like, you know, Darius Leonard's not quite there yet. But Darius Leonard pretty much has a match in a, every stat. Darius Leonard is number one for me. Now we are off to my favorite position, the defensive backs. Antoine Bethia, Bobby Boyd, Eugene Daniel, Larry Jogan, Kenny Moore, Andy Nelson, Bobo Sanders, and Rick Volt. Bobby Boyd, however, is straight up gold tier. And he's dancing all the way through it. The, uh, Colts love to dance, apparently. Next up, one of the biggest what if careers in NFL history, Bob Sanders, despite having basically only two real seasons played in his career is a gold tier uh, because when he was on the field, he was was, arguably the best safety in the league. He was, he was going to determine the outcome of the game. Yeah. And he won a defensive player of the year award at, at safety, which is incredibly rare. He changed the game. He was, and there's only two seasons where he played more than six games. He only had two seasons in seven years, I think it was, in his entire career with more than six games. That was the two years he had two first-team all-pros all and a defensive player of the year award. I mean, he's, he's the yeah, biggest he's, what if, at, but on the field, he was – Yeah, I, I could say he was one of the best safeties in an era where he played with also someone like Ed Reed, and he rivaled Ed Reed. He might not have been as big of a ball hawk as I'd read, but um, I, I I don't know. Given given healthy, I'd take yeah. Bob Sanders and Larry Jogan. Far fewer games play, but almost as many touchdowns or as interceptions. Plus, he's got the Pro Bowl appearances. Plus, he played much earlier. Um, I. I th- I feel like I'm almost like giving gold tiers away going gold with him, but I do think there's a bigger gap between him and Bethea. Um, And now we have Andy Nelson. Um, He's right up there. Like he falls in, he he probably falls right in line with Bethea for me. That's kind of where I'm at with him as well. But Andy Nelson is our fourth defensive back to play with Bobby Boyd, Bobby Sanders, and Bobby Logan. Smallest list that we could ever possibly see on all defense. Two selections, two players, Art Donovan, Robert Mathis. Uh, Then we have Robert Mathis, who is probably the most beastly of them. What, did he utilize it as well as the others? Yet to be determined, but fucking gold tier. Art Donovan played well before sacks were even considered a thing. 
So he has no stats. Or I just there's nothing. There's just nothing on there. But he made five Pro Bowls. He was four four time first team All Pro, and he's a Hall of Famer. And uh, he looks like he's from a Three Stooges skit. I keep I keep looking at uh, all the the creases in his jersey and everything. And it looks like he's got a tribal sleeve. <laughs> it, it does. <laughs> all the Robert Mathis, Art Donovan. So our offensive lineup here for the Indianapolis Colts, we have Peyton Manning at quarterback with his backup of Johnny Unitas, who, um, man, if we had that in, you, you better believe Johnny U's going to get plenty of snaps yet too. Yeah. Wide receivers of Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Raymond Berry, tight end John Mackey, and – a couple of halfbacks, and then another one. We have Edge, Lenny Moore, Marshall Falk. We also have two offensive linemen with Jeff Saturday and Jim Parker. We have a defense yet to go through. And uh, let's, let's get to it. First up on the line, we have... Well, we'll just name all four of them since the all B were also there too. We have Gino Marchetti, Dwight Freeney, Robert Mathis, and Art Donovan. We have a linebacking core of Darius Leonard, Ted Hendricks, and Mike Curtis. And we have a defensive backfield consisting of Bobby Boyd, Bob Sanders, Larry Jogan, and Nandy Alton. Andy Nelson. My guess is that they're going to finish as a team and above average where their defense is going to be below average and their offense is going to be good or the best. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us here at the Lunchroom Syndicate. This has been the Indianapolis Colts all-time team. If you like it, let us know. If you disagree, let us know as well. We want to hear your opinions down below in the comments. I have been Christopher. That has been Jay. Until next time, deuces. Recording in progress. Tamara is, and don't you forget it, bitch. <laughs> <coughs> In the- On one sec, Zunk. Let me make sure that that is not my car alarm that is going off here so nicely. I hear it. We got car alarms. You know, live TV, baby. This, this is tough. Uh, ooh, ha, he, ha, why, hey.